All right, we're doing Martha today. Um, if you haven't been with us, we're looking through the different Bible characters and we all have just been choosing one. Um, so I chose Martha. Um, I think I chose her for a couple of reasons. I think Martha gets a bit of a bad rap sometimes. I think we're kind of looking at her as a what not to do. But I think, actually think Martha has like a lot of great things about her and I think we can learn a lot. I actually also think I relate to Martha a lot, so maybe I'm just trying to justify her a little bit. I don't know, I think that could be it too. But um, anyway, I've really enjoyed looking at Martha in the lead up to today's sermon and I recommend choosing a character and doing a study because I think you'll get a lot out of it, particularly if you relate to them. Um, yeah, you can really see uh, where God wants you to go. So let's look at Martha. Um, I'll give you a bit of a cheat sheet as we lean into it. So this is not going to be a um, don't be Martha kind of message. We're going to have a little bit of a, a look deeper into it. Um, Martha welcomed Jesus. Jesus loved Martha. Martha went to Jesus and Jesus is the resurrection and life. So that's kind of what's ahead. Um, but let's get into it. So if you can turn with me to Luke chapter 10, verse 38. We're going to um, read all about it. You probably know this story pretty well, but it's always good to kind of revisit. And we're actually going to go a bit further than just this story today. So, um, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work uh, by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, Martha. No, there's just two, Martha, Martha. The Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Cool. Um, I don't know how you read that, Martha, Martha. I think it's really easy for us to kind of read it in a bit of a condemning voice, like or a bit of a scolding, like, come on, Martha, like, what, what, what's going on here? But I actually think that Jesus was showing compassion towards Martha. He had a heart for her and was like, come on, Martha, like, I want, I've got something really good for you. So... I think that's pretty important to get that right, to be able to know what comes next. So, Martha, Martha. Um, like I said before, I like Martha. She's a person of action. I can relate to it. She's the hostess with the mostess. If you watch Friends, Martha's like the Monica. She wants to get things done. She wants to be able to accommodate people. She's welcomed Jesus into her home. She's opened it up. And I can see how she's she's going around. She wants it to be perfect. I know I like having people over and entertaining, but sometimes I do get a bit caught up in, um, you know, all the things that need to be done. And you kind of, people arrive and you think, oh, um, can you just come away for a sec because I'm not ready for you. Um, but she was just keen to serve and show hospitality. And that was actually a good thing. That wasn't a bad thing. Uh, Jesus didn't say that, oh, you know, that that was a bad thing. In fact, the story before this one is the story of the Good Samaritan. So it's actually Jesus talking about being hospitable, being welcoming and, and showing love in action. So Martha's actually doing a, a pretty good thing here in welcoming Jesus into her house um, and making sure he's feel, feeling welcome. Um, she just unfortunately hasn't concentrated on the best thing. So that's just so you know, uh, that is not a bad thing there. Martha did a good thing. Um, and I guess this is where it comes into the, the, the thing that is better and it's where we get into the comparisons because often... I think you hear messages preached that it's like, okay, be Mary, not Martha. 
And I don't think we necessarily have to say, all right, be Mary, not Martha. I think um, we can say, well, let's see how we can be both, or let's see what we can learn from these guys. So, and it's, I mean, it's so easy to get caught up in comparisons, a bit of sibling rivalry. Anyone have a bit of sibling rivalry going on in their homes? Yeah. Um, I know, oh, I don't know if we had a lot of sibling rivalry, but uh, we do kind of give my brother, he's not here, but um, we give him a bit of, uh, I guess, uh, trouble because we call him the golden child. Does anyone have like a golden child in their family? Yeah, so we we call him the golden child. Things just seem to land like, you know, it will get served to him on a golden platter. It just kind of seems to go cruisy and well for him. He's also the youngest. I don't know yet. Golden, it doesn't have to be the youngest, but often it is. Um, but I think we do this in this story. We kind of pin Mary and Martha against each other, but they're not enemies. Um, and Jesus hasn't picked favourites yet. Um, we are all golden children, so I think if we stop that comparing, we can see what Jesus' heart is for us and what we actually can, um, yeah, we can, how we can actually become closer to him. So um, it's also knowing when to be like Mary, when to be like Martha, because as I said, they both have really great qualities. Um, but Martha was caught up in distraction, so I guess this is her, her uh, downfall uh, or her thorn in her side at this point. Um, and I can relate to that because there are so many distractions around us at the moment. And the world is so busy. We kind of live in this um, world or society where busyness is glorified, I think. It's like that's the sure. real... It's a real win if you're busy. If your calendar is full, then you're a successful person because you're busy, you're doing things. Sure. Um, and that's kind of a real struggle for us now. And I don't know whether that, what it was like back then, but I know particularly now, that is something that we kind of even idolize a little bit. Yes. So these distractions were getting in the way between Martha and Jesus. And I know I've got this problem. I, um, this problem really came to the forefront of my mind when I was riding my bike, I don't know when, maybe a while back, and um, I like being able to do things and fit lots of things into my day and, and get things checked off my list and feel like I'm being productive. And uh, I was riding my bike somewhere and I don't know why this was, I think I needed to slow down so I had my brakes on like my hand breaks there and then but I was a little bit like frustrated that I was going slow so then I realized I was also pedaling with my brakes on and then I just thought like okay I've got a real issue here <laughs> I'm like trying to I'm trying to do two things at once but I think we do that a lot too it's like oh, we know that we should probably slow down we know we should probably take time to do something but then we don't and we continue to to be busy and continue to pedal on, even though we should actually just be doing that one thing at a time. That's um, like, does anyone watch TV or, or do something like that? And like, I don't know for me, when I'm watching TV, I'll often also be on my phone or like doing two things at once. Is anyone like that? Yeah, yeah I think um, it's really, really easy to get caught up in that. And it is really important to stop and to rest and to do those things when they need to be done. And Jesus said, only one thing is needed. One thing. Which is great, because there's so many things going on. There's so much that's vying for our attention. So let's focus on the one thing. Um, you know, we have such a complicated world around us. So what is this one thing? He was talking about coming and sitting at his feet and just being with Jesus. And I think David puts, I assume it's David, it's a, there's a scripture in Psalms, if we go to that one, Psalms 27 verse 4, and I'm assuming it's David that's written it, but I'm not 100% sure. It says, One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, 
that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. That actually sounds like three things to me, but I think what David is saying is that the one thing is the being with God, but then if we look at those three verbs that he talks about, the three actions, there's dwell, gaze, and seek. So I guess this here dwell is what he was talking to Martha about. Just come and dwell and be with me. Come and abide, remain, sit, stay. Just come and be. Um, and as I said before, I can get really caught up in wanting to do a lot and I think I'm the kind of um, nightmare traveller that I love to just squeeze as much as I can out of a day. So I love travelling, I um, haven't been for a while, but when I do, I love being able to just like go and just squeeze it so there's not like one single drop left and just do all the things, see all the things, eat all the things. And I think that's sometimes the way that um, I know I live my life is not seize the day, it's squeeze the day. Um, and it would be, I know, some people's absolute worst nightmare, but uh, something that God's been talking to me about this year is abiding in him and what that actually means to just abide in him. But before I could do that, he, he talked to me about abandoning. So abandoning some of my plans, abandoning the distractions, my agenda, and then once we've done that, just to abide in him. That's good. And I think that's really was Jesus' heart for Martha in this story. Like, come and just, just abandon that. Don't worry about, like, don't worry about that. Don't, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, or maybe Martha was a bit of a perfectionist. But just come and abide, dwell, seek, uh, sorry, remain with me. Um, so maybe just stop trying to squeeze that sponge of all it's worth um, because if you do, you're going to be pretty dry. There's times when we need to just soak, um, soak it up and just be with Jesus. Uh, and I don't know, once we've kind of got that down, then we can, um, we can gaze on his beauty, behold, look, contemplate, and then seek, inquire, so I think there's these kind of stages to it. It's dwelling, gazing, seeking. I find these last two a little bit easier, but I think that's important to start with just dwelling at his feet. So it's made me think about if Jesus was physically in my home, how would I react? Because it's one thing to give the Sunday school answer but it's another thing to be doing in reality. And we, you can welcome Jesus into your home. He said that. We, we can welcome him into our hearts, into our lives. And I think sometimes we do, and we just forget to take that time to be with him. Um, and we know what's best. We know that there's a lot of good things that we can get, up, get caught up doing, uh, but just remembering what is best. So open your home and sit at his feet. So that's the story that we, we know of Mary and Martha. And often we kind of put ourselves as one of those two characters. But now let's get the record set straight for those thinking, you know, Martha was still getting a bit of a scolding. I think we sometimes go, oh, what not to do? Or she maybe she ruined her chances, she missed the point. But um, if you turn with me to John 11, John 11 is the story of Lazarus. So Lazarus is actually Martha and Mary's brother. Maybe he was the golden child. Who knows? Um, he was unwell and they sent for Jesus. Jesus delayed and unfortunately Lazarus died and Jesus was on his way to perform a miracle but they did not know that. And it says, let's just get into actually if we go back before we get into this part that relates to uh, Martha um, in verse 5 it says now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus so Jesus loved Martha I think 
that for me was really, yeah, kind of eye-opening. I think you know that, but just to be reminded that Jesus loved Martha, yeah. even though she messed up maybe, maybe she was a bit too intense, maybe she fell short, uh, maybe she was a bossy boots, maybe she was a perfectionist, maybe she didn't get it quite right, but Jesus loved Martha. Yeah. And I think it's cool that they actually specify that and they're really, yeah, it's, it's written there in the Bible for everyone to know. So um, I just want us to have that in our minds because Jesus loved Martha and that should be pivotal for the whole of this story. Um, so if we continue on to John 11, verse 17 to 27. On his arrival... Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was two, less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in their loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. So Martha went to meet Jesus. She seeked him. She had a bold faith. Says e she said, even now I know. She, she understood the power of Jesus. She understood and had the revelation that he was a Messiah. So as much as um, we don't know where that story ended with Mary and Martha, whether she dropped what she was doing and came to Jesus' feet, whether that became a revelation for her later, and she understood that, but we definitely see in her faith now that she had that, that deep understanding of who Jesus was and um, that faith, I guess, drove her to act. And she had this amazing kind of um, foundation in, in Jesus and knew who he was. Um, so she was still a go-getter. Maybe she was a bit confrontational. Um, but we see that her faith, it, dumped, it trumped doubt and fear. And she, she knew who Jesus was. She went out to him. So where do we go from here? I think there's a few things that if we can really understand and grasp them, that our walk with Jesus will become so much um, deeper, more powerful. And... Yeah, I just think that we can get that closeness with Jesus. So if we go to the next slide. I think firstly, we can slot our names in here. Jesus loves, insert your name. Jesus loved Mark. Jesus loves you. Um, if we actually understand this very first thing, um, what would that change in our life? When you know someone loves you and you have that security of having their love and knowing nothing can change it, how would that change everything? You know, how, how would that, yeah, help you to move forward? So whether you realise it or not, it's a fact. So we start there. Um, and then we welcome him into your home. We can welcome Jesus into our home. Um, we can come and be with him, dwell with him. And 
he says that he'll come and, and be with us. And when we've got that sorted um, and we've dwelt with him, then we can act in faith. And I think getting those things in the right order and having that priority is really important because I think, well, I know, where I can get caught up is doing that first one, as well the last one first. So I'm trying to act in faith before I have a good understanding of the other things. Because it's then that we kind of maybe just end up doing a whole lot of good things, but not what's best. So how do we take it back and how do we dwell with God? How do we dwell with Jesus? How do we rest well? Um, how do we get out of the kitchen and come to the feet of Jesus? I don't actually think that there's a, a formula to it. And I don't think that there's a certain time limit. I don't know that there's a particular a way to do it. But I do know that Jesus went to deserted places to connect with his Father. Um, it, it can be helpful just to carve out some time to to be alone with God, to, to sit with him, to dwell with him. Um, and it can look different to different people. Perhaps it's just getting a quiet moment at home. Maybe it's at a cafe, in your car, at the beach, nature. Something I've been thinking about a lot this year is kind of reclaiming the Sabbath. We know the creation story. We know that on the seventh day, God rested. And thinking about that this week, that God wouldn't have needed to rest. Like, it's not like he would have been physically exhausted. He's God. He chose to rest. And that is like an example to us, like, Whereas we probably actually do physically need the rest because we are human. But, you know, God chose to rest and we need to. So, um, it's, yeah, I think that we kind of just charge through. And I'm not saying we need to make it a religious thing or, um, yeah, overcomplicate even that. But just knowing that we need that time to dwell with God. Um, first before we do the next thing and um, I guess it can also be important to not get caught up in the fact that or misinterpret rest as laziness because I guess that's again you could look at that story of Mary and Martha and that is maybe the way that Martha viewed Mary as being lazy but dwelling with God is not being lazy it's not vegging out it's not switching off. It's not scrolling or getting caught up in different things that take our time and eat our time. That's not rest. Mm. Or it's not just, you know, oversleeping. Or it, it, I think it's still a very much a, an action that we need to be intentional about. But if we can get that and we're rested up, then we can be ready to act in faith. Um, and that Martha did well. So she went out to Jesus. She was proactive about it. And I think when we've got that sorted, then we can go out and we're a bit more aware of what exactly God wants us to do and how we can um, do the best things rather than just doing a whole lot of good things. Um, yeah. So... That, I guess, I hope that encourages you, like it's encouraged me this week. And I think what would be really cool to end this service with today is just to have another worship, and another time of worship, and, um, yeah, just maybe have a think about how we can apply that to our lives, how we can rest well so that we can uh, be people of faith in action and how we can, yeah, then, you know, put that into action in the world around us. So, thanks, Tony.